It's during last night's telecast. Charles Barkley had some strong words on the state of the franchise right now. Take a listen. Ain't nothing worse than fake hustle. I guarantee you the Rockets going to lose this game. <laughs> they came out full of energy because they've been embarrassed because everybody been killing them on TV. But I'm guaranteeing you the Rockets are going to lose this game, and they're probably going to lose the game by 10 points. Rocket CEO Tad Brown responded to Barkley on Twitter saying this. Charles would know his entire Rockets career was fake hustle. Skip. Wow. Funny. Your reaction. Mm. Stephen A. Smith, allow me to say up front for the record that, as you know, Charles Barkley has been extreme in his criticism publicly of me for many, many years on national talk shows, chat shows, late night shows. And I have always been fine with that, though I must admit those close to me have not been all that fine with it. But because of that, I wanted to, to just declare this up front. Maybe I'm not totally objective. I will admit, when I saw Tad Brown's tweet, I laughed out loud because it was funny to me, even though it was extreme in its criticism of Charles. I'll get to that in a moment. I had two reactions to this, to Molly's question. My first reaction is, why did these team executives continue to have Twitter accounts? Because routinely, especially in playoff situations, they get over-emotional and overprotective of their team, and they lash out with, with emotional knee-jerk tweets that they immediately regret, and this one got deleted. So, again, you're, as a team executive, Tad Brown, you're not speaking for you. You're speaking and representing, speaking for and representing an entire organization. And your thoughts are going to be viewed as their thoughts. So you just can't do it. And I think every organization should shut down all Twitter accounts of any executive associated with the organization. That's number one. Now, back to the tweet. There is some truth, but only some truth, to what Tad Brown tweeted about Charles's four years late in his career with the Houston Rockets. And Stephen A., you'll, you'll remember this. Charles came to town with much hoopla, which built huge expectations in Houston. That was a veritable dream team built around the dream, Akeem Olajuwon and Clyde Drexler and Mario Ellie, and we can go on and on. It looked like a loaded team, but it was an old team. And it did have one big first hurrah that first year when it made it to the conference finals and lost in six games to Malone and Stockton in Utah. But as, as Charles wound down his career at ages 34, 35, and 36 in his last three years in Houston, I don't believe his heart was always in it as his body started to betray him. And in the end, it really betrayed him. Remember what happened to him? He tore a, a quad tendon that last year and missed the whole year and came back for one last game at the end of that year just so he wouldn't have to go out on such a low note. But the point is, if you view Charles's total career, there were times that on defense, he was guilty of displaying fake hustle just on defense. He wasn't always committed to playing defense, even though he had high steals for a power forward. He was al always, obviously, an all-time great offensive rebounder at only about six feet four inches, a great scorer at only about six feet four inches inside and outside. But throughout his career, I think Charles was sometimes viewed as more of a me player than a we player. So if you want to get into fake hustle, maybe that occasionally applied to Charles, but not, you can't do it as a blanket statement all four years in Houston. It was nothing but fake hustle. So there was some truth to it enough that I thought it was funny, but my bottom line is that Tad Brown should have his Twitter account shut down by the owner that he is close to, Leslie Alexander. Well, I get where you're coming from. Uh, I think that people overreact. Charles Barkley is an elite basketball commentator. He's somebody that's incredibly hilarious and funny, except for when he's talking about you because he really, really, really doesn't like you. And I, 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 I kind of get on him about that because everybody knows I'm friends with Charles Barkley. I love him dearly, but you know I love you too. And I don't like how he talks about you sometimes. He, being Charles Barkley, as honest as he is, as much as he loves me, tells me all the time, I don't give a damn. We're going to have to agree to disagree on that. I don't like Skip Bayless, and that's all he says. And I but don't he'll care. never do anything to you. He'll never do anything to you. He just, he, just, he just feels the way that he feels. That's all it is to it. But let me say this about Charles Barkley. Um, I 
look at guys. I have no problem with players who or organizations who want to speak against the things that Charles Barkley say. I only have one criteria for them. You need to win a championship. If you are a champion and you want to refute vehemently and with venom, whatever Charles Barkley has to say, I get all of that because you have accomplished something he did not accomplish. If you are not a champion, you need to shut the hell up, fall back, and recognize the fact that he has every right to say the things that he says. Charles Barkley averaged 22 points and 11.7 rebounds for his career. He averaged it on 54.5% shooting from the field over the course of 16 years. He's a Hall of Famer. He's an Olympic gold medalist. And even though he never won an NBA championship, let's keep in mind, not only was Jordan in his way in the East, but Jordan was also in his way when he went to the Western Conference because when he played against Jordan in the NBA Finals in 1993, that was Jordan that was standing in his way with Pippen. This guy was a walking double-double. In his 16-year career, the only time he didn't average double digits per season in rebounds was his rookie year. Every other time in his career, over the course of 15 years, even the last year when his health was debilitated, he averaged a minimum of 10 and a half rebounds per game. So when he sits back, as comical as he may be, and as insulting as, as he may come across at times, people who are champions are the only ones that have a right to say something to him about it. Outside of that, they all need to shut the hell up. Because the fact of the matter is, the round mound of rebound, okay, who sometimes had questionable conditioning, no doubt about it, still rolled up on the basketball court and was one of the dominant figures in a game, in a time when the game wasn't called as soft as tissue paper. At a time when you had the Oakleys of the world and the Xavier McDaniels of the world and people like that, whether it was Ewing and David Robinson and others, the league was hardcore, as you well know better than me, Skip, because you was covering the NBA before I came along. It was rough and rugged. It was very physical. It was a lot of different things. And Charles Barkley was one of the menacing figures in the game of basketball. He put up numbers. He won basketball games. He was consistently competitive. There were, he didn't get punked by anybody other than the time when Charles Oakley tried to step to him, even though he was a punk, but you know what I'm saying. Yep. The point that I'm trying to make to you is Charles Oakley, so let's keep that in mind. Yep. The only thing I'm saying is I get upset when all of these folks who play in the NBA, coach in the NBA, or are executives in the NBA think they have a right to come back at Charles Barkley because they're uncomfortable with the truth that he is spewing. If you've won a championship, then you have achieved something he hasn't achieved. Then you have made sacrifices that he hasn't made. Isaiah Thomas can talk negatively about Charles Barkley if he so chooses. Michael Jordan can do that if he so chooses. Uh, in today's modern-day era, the LeBrons, the Kobe's, the D-Wade's, people like that can do so. But anybody who has not won a championship, I'm going to repeat myself again. Shut the hell up. He is a Hall of Famer who legitimately is a Hall of Famer because of what he was able to do on a basketball court. Nine times out of ten, he's spitting truth. And if you don't like it, do something about it on the basketball court. Because had you been going against Charles Barkley back in that day, I'd like to see what kind of player you would have been going up against him. The elite took him out, but it took you being elite to take him out. Let's respect this man, because okay. I damn sure do. Okay, I get you. So you're saying Tad Brown was not responding from a position of strength because That's he's right. been 12 years with That's the Rockets right. and they haven't obviously won a championship That's in right. the last 12 years. That's well, right. He might say, if we had him on the show right now, that despite whom Charles ran up against, that Charles never did win a ring, so he could say that Charles is not speaking as a champion, right? Well, he can say that Charles is not speaking as a champion, but he's speaking about somebody who's also not a champion. So you ultimately have to put Charles Barkley's credentials up against Tad Brown. Who's Tad Brown against Charles Barkley? Who? Well, he, he, did, he? He, he did start all four years for Colgate. 
I'm, I'm just really? throwing that out. I'm just kidding. I'm just but he did. He started all four years. He was team captain for three years. I'm, 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 I'm sorry, game. bro. I'm, just I'm for sorry, the Skip. I, yeah. Skip, I apologize. Not no, bad. I apologize. Not bad. I, I, I don't appreciate know if they won a championship know, or not, but I did not know very first good take yeah. on ESP. Hold on. Yeah. I did not know that first take on ESPN <laughs> two turned into Comedy Central. Oh. I did not know that oh. Skip was a comedian. Yeah, so I'm I am. giving hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm giving you twenty two and twelve. 54% shooting, gold medalist, Hall of Famer, one of the top 50 players in NBA history, and you give me Colgate? I thought that was a damn toothpaste. You nope. got to no, be kidding really me. Really good I school. mean, you were really yes. Colgate? Yeah. You ought to check you ought to out Google it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And you're fun. Skip, I got now, you. Now, okay. I, I'm going to defer to you for the rest of the okay, day. That right. is hilarious. Right. Just, I, I, I was making a joke, Cold obviously. Day. Okay, <laughs> ju just for the record. Now, you're bringing all this up. Just for the record. Remember, okay. remember, back to, you, you mentioned he's an Olympic champion. Remember oh. what happened in 1984 to Charles Barkley? He got cut by Bobby Knight off that and, Olympic team. Well, I'm just and, saying, just to keep this in balance, keep it in perspective. I, I, hold on, wait, wait Because wait he didn't play enough defense for Bobby Knight's liking, just for the Fair record. Fair enough. Okay. Fair enough. Skip, we are sitting here raving about the greatness of a James Harden. Is he making anybody's all-defensive team? I don't see anybody negate, negating the greatness that he put forth on the court night in and night out based off of that. Yeah. There's plenty of guys that are in the NBA today that weren't Kobe, that weren't MJ, that weren't Tim Duncan, that didn't do it on both ends of the floor, that they can specifically recognize for their greatness as offensive okay. players. And we let that go, All so right. we can't let it go with Barkley? Okay, final thought. Final thought. I got you. I, to, to Charles's point, I'm not seeing fake hustle in the Rockets. I'm not. That means they're sort of just going through the motions and basically quitting. I'm not seeing a team that's quitting. They didn't quit last night. They didn't lay down last night and say, well, please end this quickly. Well, let's be clear. What I believe, and I have not spoken to Charles Barkley about this. I haven't spoken to him since last night or anything like that. But I will tell you this. My interpretation of what he meant by fake hustle is that they're going to come out last night and give an all-out effort because pride and everything yeah. else is going to sift into the equation. They don't want people bringing out their broomsticks. They don't want to go into the weekend with everybody looking forward to them getting swept. And as a result, they're going to put forth an effort that should always be there, not just when you're on the precipice of a, or on, on a brink of elimination. That's okay. what I interpreted his comments as being. But I want to reiterate my last point. If a champion, champions make sacrifices, personally and professionally. All of them have taught me that. Hall of Famers who are champions make sacrifices that people can't imagine. They've all taught me that. If they want to attack Charles Barkley, I got nothing to say. Because they've done what right. he hasn't done. Outside of that, nobody has a right to say a damn word about what he has to say because for people who are not champions, you can't have a more elite resume than him. The Carl Malones, of course, yep. you know, people like that are up there. But those guys that don't have champions but were elite in every way and in Charles Barkley's case, box office, because you walk through the turnstiles to watch him yep, play. I agree. I don't want to hear that from anybody about him. I don't want to hear that. We leave it there. When we come back, a guy who was almost a champion during this Super Bowl, a lot of teams interested in Josh Norman, but what is the best fit? Herm Edwards will join us next. We'll break this one down for you. Stay here.